Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Sapphire Radeon HD 7870 GHz edition 2GB GDDR5 graphics card from AMD. This is the GHz edition of the HD 7870. But let's take a look at the box first. Again, this is the Sapphire HD 7870 GHz edition. This means this card comes with a core clock of at least 1 GHz, so 1000 MHz. As for cooling, Sapphire uses their Dual X dual fan cooler. This HD7870 of course comes with 2 GB of GDDR5 memory. On the back of the box, Sapphire will basically tell you more about the features and what's included in the box. But now let's open this box up and see what's inside. There we go, inside is a cardboard box. Now let's open that one up as well. This is what's inside of it. Right on top is the driver CD, but I'd recommend downloading the latest drivers from AMD's website. Oh, and in there also is a Sapphire sticker inside. Then here's a small Sapphire note and of course there's also a quick installation guide. This is the Sapphire product registration and finally the graphics card itself in an anti-static bag. But we'll get to that in a moment. First let's take a look at the accessories. There we go. Here we have two long Molex to PCI Express 6 pin power adapters just in case you have an older power supply. I'm glad Sapphire also includes a crossfire bridge for a two way crossfire configuration. Last but not least, a DVI to VGA adapter for older monitors. But let's get to the graphics card now. At first, I'll take it out of the anti static bag. There it is, but I'll quickly remove the plastic protection here on top of it. There we go, here it is now. The first impression is good. A fairly robust plastic shroud is used with nice stripes here. As you can see Sapphire uses their dual axe dual fan cooler here featuring two fans. A fairly good amount of aluminum is used and the heatsink is connected with copper heat pipes to help dissipate the heat faster. Obviously this isn't the best cooler, but hey, that's just the HD7870 GHz edition GPU, it shouldn't get too hot anyways. This card isn't fully enclosed, and on that side you can even see two copper heat pipes. This black metal part here will also help with the cooling, but will also add stability at the same time. I have to admit, this card kinda looks plasticky, and it is, but it's really not that bad. On the rear are the two PCIe 6 pin power connections, but to be honest, I really don't like the location of these. In the computer case, it could be quite challenging sometimes to connect the power cables, because the shroud is somewhat close on both sides. Disconnecting the cables could be even harder, so I'm really not a big fan of that. In case you didn't notice it yet, Sapphire as always used their standard blue color for the PCB. As always, I'd prefer darker colors such as black for example. Right here are the four metal screws that hold the heavy heatsink in place. As for the interface, PCI Express 3.0 is used, but don't worry, you can also install this card into PCIe 2.0 slots with minimal performance differences. Up here also is a crossfire finger, allowing you to run a two-way crossfire configuration. This is a dual slot card by the way, and as for the outputs, there's a black DVI output on the top, one standard white DVI output below, one HDMI output, and last but not least, a single DisplayPort output. And up here are some big ventilation holes. So overall this graphics card doesn't look bad at all. I don't really like the plastic look, but other than that, it looks pretty good. The card also isn't very long, so it should fit in most computer cases. But let's move on to the specifications. The Sapphire Radeon HD 7870GHz edition graphics card has 2GB of GDDR5 memory and uses the Pitkern XT GPU. It has a core clock of exactly 1000MHz and a memory clock of 1200MHz. The TDP would be 175 watts and the new 28 nanometer architecture is used. DirectX 11.1 .1 is fully supported and the bus width would be 256 bit. 
Here in GPU-Z the graphics card gets detected without any problems and once again all the specifications are visible. The 28 nanometer technology, which allows fitting more transistors into the GPU, 2 GB of GDDR5 memory, the X11.1, 256 bit and the 153.6 gigabit per second bandwidth. As for the drivers at the time of this video, the latest stable driver is installed. Like I've said before, the GHz edition cards are clocked higher than the regular versions, but with the two fans on the card, you could overclock it even further yourself. Just make sure to increase the fan speed to prevent the GPU from overheating. But enough talk about the specifications and so on, let's move on to the benchmarks. So the Sapphire Radeon HD 7870 GHz edition 2GB GDDR5 graphics card for sure is a very good performer. In some tests it competes with the Nvidia GTX 660 Ti, which costs a lot more. However, these are just some tests. This HD 7870 GHz edition card needs to be compared against the Nvidia GTX 660 non-Ti version. Both cards are similarly priced and also offer comparable performance. Depending on the benchmark and game, the HD7870 sometimes performs worse than the GTX 660, but in lots of cases this 7870 beats the GTX 660. Not by far though, but sometimes it can really be a bigger difference. This graphics card has a really good price performance ratio, because you can pretty much max out every single game on the market, with some exceptions of course such as Crisis 3, which got released not too long ago, and so this could also still be a driver thing. However, I've also tested the card with the 13.2 Beta 6 drivers, just to make sure my results are valid, and they are. Sometimes, of course, you might not find the game 100% playable at maxed out settings, but lowering these settings to high would definitely result in 
100% playable frame rates. But if you want to have some reserves in terms of frame rates, get the HD7950 or the HD7970 GHz edition. So if you're a gamer and want the best performance for the price, the HD7870 GHz edition graphics card is the best deal at the time of this video. The temperatures are ok with just 60 degrees Celsius on full load and the power consumption results are very nice too. On idle as you saw on my chart, the HD7870 draws a little more power, 4% more to be specific, but on a 100% load the GTX 660 consumes roughly 10% more power than the HD7870. So Sapphire as well as AMD did a great job with this graphics card. Pros are great price performance ratio, very good performance and very good power consumption results. For the cons I can only say the design looks very plasticky, but other than that it's a great card. I give it a 10 out of 10 and would definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.